Welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. We're your number one source for talk paranormal radio every Saturday and Sunday from 9 p.m. to midnight central time. Again, if you miss one of our shows, simply go to click on the Darkness Radio tab and you can find our podcast right on our website. Any of you that have been listening on the uh, podcasts from uh, iTunes in the past, you're going to have to go over reassign yourself so that you never miss an episode of Darkness Radio. We hope that you'll check that out. Again, we're going to be on in a minute with our guest. If you have questions for our guest this evening, we've got two ways to contact us. One, or you can call us at 800-270-5560. Again, that number is 800 800- Two seven zero five five six zero. Right now, I do want to mention again, if you're interested in joining us, Tim, myself, and the lovely Nicole Remini, we're going to be out at Rosedale AMC Theaters this Thursday. We've got free passes to see the new horror movie, Quarantine. Sounds like a fantastic movie. I'm a big zombie type fan. That's what it's looking like in the ads. Uh, quick synopsis, television reporter Angela Vidal and her cameraman are assigned to spend the night shift with a Los Angeles fire station. After a routine 911 call takes them to a small apartment building, they find police officers already on the scene in response to blood-curdling screams coming from one of the apartment units. They soon learn that a woman living in the building has been infected by something unknown. And after a few of the residents are viciously attacked, they try to escape with the news crew in tow, only to find that the CDC has quarantined the building. Phones, internet, televisions, and cell phone access have been cut off, and officials are not relaying information to those locked outside or inside. When the quarantine is finally lifted, the only evidence of what took place is the news crew's videotape. So it looks like a cross between a zombie movie and the Blair Witch or... Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of that other movie that just came out last year. Uh, my mind is blank. But the big giant monster that uh, Cloverfield sounds like kind of a Cloverfield saw movie, but the commercials look frightening. So hopefully you'll give us a call if you want to be a part of the movie screening this Thursday. It's good for you and a friend. Come out to the Rosedale AMC Theaters, see the movie Quarantine with Tim, myself, and Nicole Remini, and uh, we'll take those orders. Um, Tim will take down your information, and we'll see you out there at 630 this week. All right, uh, I do want to make a quick mention. I know last week we talked about, I, I was on Paranormal State, saw UFOs. Uh, we filmed the entire episode. It turned out great. If you missed it, you can actually go um, to paranormalstate.com, and I think they have full episodes you can watch right on their website. We also have the uh, episode, if you go to darknessradio.com, we've got small little video versions of the episodes right on our front page, so you can check that out. Or join us at MySpace. You can go to MySpace backslash the Dark Knight, T H E D A R K N I G H T. That's my personal space. We have the videos right there. You can watch the episodes. We were supposed to speak to Kevin Grazier, who is uh, works with NASA, and he was going to come on and talk to us about what it was I saw. Unfortunately, we we're unable to follow back up with him this week. He was uh, unavailable to take our calls or be a part of the show. Hopefully, we'll get him on in the future and we can find out what was going on. We want to thank our friend Shay Whitehurst for trying to put that interview together for us. Um, that that's, uh, like I said, hopefully going to take place again here in the future. We do have a brand new trip up to the Assetti Ranch so that you can go UFO hunting with Tim, myself, um, James Gilliland from Gilliland's Ranch. We have Bill Chappell, the communications expert, is going to be there. We also have uh, Dean Haglin from the TV show X-Files is also a conspiracy theorist. He's going to talk to us about some of the cool UFO stories and, and evidence that he's actually seen of real UFOs and alien activity. And he's going to do a cool comedy bit for us at night, a big comedy show. So hopefully you can join us for that. We're going to be adding more guests. We have Bill Burns from UFO Hunters on the History. History Channel joining us. We're working on a couple of other really great guests, so keep checking out the website at darknessevents.com. You can also join us to go out this summer, May 2009. We're going to Waverly Hills. Chris Fleming, Patrick Burns are going to be joining us. Also, Mark and Debbie Constantino, the EVP experts. Bill Chappell, the communications and electronics experts, going to be out there with us. Whole slew of great characters. I hope that you'll join us and have a little fun with us. You can check all that information and information about our cool, wicked Halloween party coming up on Halloween at the Haunted Palmer House in Sauk Center, Minnesota. Again, come on out. The party's free. Come on in and join us for drinks partying and uh, have fun of course free to get in but you still have to pay for your drinks and food we are auctioning off 10 slots to go ghost hunt with the cast of darkness radio and some of the members of the twin cities paranormal society are going to lead us through a ghost hunt of the haunted palmer house from 1 30 a.m till about 4 30 in the morning so if you want to be a part of that we'll be raising money for the veterans home in sauk center minnesota right now though we're going to go to our guest for the evening and I'm excited to get him on uh, on our show. Our guest is Len Marzulli. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he holds an honorary doctorate from Pacific International University for his research on the Nephilim. 
He's appeared on numerous radio and television programs discussing the burgeoning UFO phenomena as well as ancient prophetic manuscripts. And he believes that we're living in a time when we see many of these prophecies fulfilled. He also warns of what he has described as a great deception, which is supernatural and paranormal in origin. And the title of his best-selling uh, book is called Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, The Coming Great Deception and the Luciferian Endgame. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, for the first time ever on the Darkness on the Edge of Town paranormal radio show, Len, is it Marzulli? Am I pronouncing that correctly? I'm pronouncing it correctly. Thank All right. you. Well, thank you for joining us, Mr. Marzulli. I appreciate you being here with us this evening. Thank you. So now you, you've got a doctorate or an honorary doctorate from Pacific International. You did research on the Nephilim. I mentioned that for our listeners. We have a lot of new listeners to the paranormal realm here. Give me a quick explanation. What is the Nephilim? Wow, that, that's quite a mouthful. There's actually three novels that I, I wrote uh, based on the Nephilim. It's called the Nephilim Trilogy, but it comes from two sources. Both are very ancient manuscripts. One is found in the uh, biblical Genesis. The other one is in, uh, found in the what is known as the Book of Enoch, but there's also other mentions of the Nephilim and other works of antiquity, such as Joseph as a first century uh, Jewish historian who wrote about that the bones of these creatures were apparently openly displayed in Jerusalem at the time of his writing. And of course, this is first century. So, uh, you know, it's very strange. But to get, to, let me answer it this way that according to the mythos from, from both of these, or the story, now, and the reason why I call it mythos, let, let me define that. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I only have these documents that tell us mm -hmm. that this is what happened. So either you believe it or you don't believe it. Um, and what I find interesting is that if it was only one source, it would be perhaps a canard or spurious. But the fact that there's more than one source, for instance, you've got the Genesis account, you've got the Book of Enoch, you've also had the Book of Jared, uh, you've got Josephus commenting on them and others. And then you seem to have, we seem to have like remnants, in other words, not only skeletons have we seen giant bones, whatever, but we also see perhaps the remnant of the Nephilim. And so, in other words, what they may have constructed on the planet during their brief stay here. So the Nephilim, according to the book of Genesis and the book of Enoch, is the offspring of fallen angels and the women of Earth. And I realize that is just, you know, some of your listeners are going, what? Right. And I don't blame it because it's freaky stuff. It's really, really freaky stuff. But when you get into it and you start to, especially the book of Enoch, Genesis in the biblical account is kind of a truncated view of the event. It, it's, it's no more than really several paragraphs. That's it. The book of Enoch, on the other hand, is the whole tome is, is um, devoted to uh, discovering and, and trying to, well, not, not amplifying, let's say, that Genesis 6 account, not discovering, but amplifying that. So what you read is, in the Genesis, is kind of like a cliff note version. Right. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and desired them and took whoever they wanted for wives. And the offspring of that became a Nephilim, mighty men of renown. The book of Enoch lists names, places, what happened, how big they were, what they did, uh, the quid pro quo between the fallen angels and the, and the uh, men of earth before they could have access to the female population. I mean, it's really, really bizarre stuff. All that to say that the Nephilim, of course, we're never supposed to be here. In other words, this is an abomination. This is literally um, inter interbreeding between two different species that just was not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. I also believe that, um, and we've got this from Greek mythology, that some of the, uh, the titans, let's say, ling linguistically, and, and even the storyline can be traced back to this Genesis 6 or this Enochian, if I can use that word, the Enochian account of the fallen angels coming to earth, cohabiting with the women, and the offspring being the Nephilim or the Nephilim. So it's, it's from really from many sources. And, of course, what happened is that they were here. It's, it's not like a weekend trip. They come down, the women get pregnant, you know, they leave. Now, they're here for like about 400 to 450 years. They're here for a long period of time. And in that period of time, they may have constructed certain megalithic structures around the globe. For instance, you can, you know, Zawi Hawass, if he were here on the other end, he immediately starts screaming at me. Zawi Hawass is the supreme head of antiquities in the Giza Plateau in Egypt. And he believes that the Great Pyramid was constructed by Egyptians about 5,000 years ago, okay? Other people, for instance, Dr. Schock, believe that the pyramids date much older than that, specifically the Sphinx. But this begs the question, how do you get millions of blocks of stone one upon another when the Egyptians didn't even have the wheel? So, you know, the stories that I've seen are 
huge sand ramps and slaves and, and ropes and this and that, and, you know, they're, they're rolling the stuff up. I mean, it's just laughable, in my opinion. But let's, let's just hold the, back, the pyramid on the back burner for a second. Let's go to my favorite site, which I actually quote and, and really get into in prophecy, uh, politics, prophecy, and the supernatural, and that is Baalbek. And Baalbek is in Lebanon and in the Baca Valley. And what's bizarre about this site is there's no room to build a ramp. There's no room for cranes or horses or pulleys. It's a very tight little, tight little uh, geographic location. And in that location in Baalbek is the, are the three largest stones ever quarried by human hands, if, they, if in fact human hands did quarry them. They're called the Trilithon. These weigh hundred, you know, hundreds of tons. And they're just huge. I mean, if you if you Google Baalbek and what comes up when you you see Betrothal, I mean, it's it's just amazing to see. And this begs the question: How the heck did these guys move the stones a quarter mile away from where the quarry was to the site of Baalbek? And remember, there's no cranes. There's there's, there's nothing that we have in the modern world. In fact, I've talked to, and, and I quote this in the book that that um, today we moderns would be hard pressed to move stones of that size. We don't have cranes that can move it. Well, and now, yet, Len, there is, I, and I, I'm kicking myself for not remembering the name of it, but uh, there is a site, an older gentleman built this whole, like, kind of mecca to his wife. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's down in Florida. Yes. Right, and now, yes. this guy, he made, I mean, Tapped into something. tons of stone that he was able to move by himself. He made a door. It's a giant right. slab. What is it, like two tons, two and it's a half tons? Amazing. You can push it with just your fingers just and open it up. Fingers. In fact, they, they, it broke, and they tried to fix it, and, they, and they, couldn't, they couldn't fix it. They didn't know how to fix it. And, you know, the legend goes, it's called Coral Castle. And, and the legend is, is that, you know, some, so he did something in the middle of the night. He, he tapped into something that apparently the ancients tapped into, whether it was sound vibrations. I mean, who knows what this guy was dealing with. But, yeah, it's very enigmatic, and I've never been there. But uh, at, one, at some point, hopefully before I uh, leave this planet, I would sure like to see it, and you know, with my own two eyes. But, but getting back to Baalbek, you know, we've got, we've got these stones that are placed, um, and, and here's the deal. In the book of Enoch, it talks about the giants. Remember, the giants are the offspring of fallen angels and women of the earth. Right. Now, let's talk real quickly, too, just again to give our, our listeners some background, because a lot of the people that come from a religious ilk will not recognize the book of Enoch from the Bible, which is strange, again, because the book was, was not put into the finalized Bible that we have, but it's referenced throughout the Bible. Very good. And it's, uh, it's actually a, a, a book that was written and, and tells kind of a darker side and a different part of the Bible history. And, and it just was never included, although the, the strange conundrum, again, is that they refer to it throughout the Bible, correct? Correct. They, they actually refer to it in three different places. One is the book of Jude, the other one is Second Peter, and then Paul alludes to it in uh, Corinthians. So the, the book was widely read. I mean, it's found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Is it part of the canon? No, it's not part of the canon. But we can certainly appreciate its historicity mm -hmm. and look back and, and say that, you know, if this is, if this is true... Um, and I kind of believe it, it's it's very much true. Then what are we looking at? Interesting, interestingly enough, there's a there's a quote attributed to the first century rabbi Yeshua Hamashiach, and and he says that uh, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like the days of Noah, which begs the question: What differentiates the days of Noah than any other time in history? And of course, it is the presence of the fallen angels. I mean, there's it, you know history as far as we know it. Is, is pretty much linear. I mean, things have gone on, and yes, there's technology, and, and from the Industrial Revolution to the time that we live in now, there's a, a huge upsurge in technology and, and human revelation. I'll admit to that. But basically, what differentiates the days of Noah from any other time in history, in my opinion, is the presence of the Benai Elohim, which is the fallen angels dwelling on the earth, which begs the question again, are we looking at that right now? Is it similar in other words, and this, of course, ties into the whole UFO thing, are we looking at a similarity between what happened with the fallen angels thousands and thousands of years ago and what is happening now? And in my opinion, of course, the answer is yes. This well, why don't we we'll, we'll delve into that more. We have to take a quick break here. Again, if you guys are interested, the... Uh the amazing psychic medium Lisa Williams is going to be in town on October 10th. Uh, I believe there's still some tickets available, and it's free event parking. It's out at the Earl Brown Center in Brooklyn Park. You can uh, get tickets by going to edgelife.net backslash tickets, or you can call 
888-810-2065. Again, 888-810-2065. There's great tickets still left for uh, Lisa Williams. I hope that you'll go out there. I'm going to try to go out and meet her as well. And uh, for those of you that would like to call in and uh, participate in this weekend or this uh, week's movie quarantine which is a brand new horror movie that comes out on thursday tim nicole and i will be out at rosedale amc theaters the, the movie starts at 7 30 we'll be there at about 6 6 30 to hand out the passes call in right now if you'd like free passes to come see the horror movie quarantine with tim nicole and myself remember to be patient he's the only one in there answering calls we'll be back with more stay tuned you're listening to darkness radio Welcome back to the show. If you're listening online, join us in our live chat room. Go to darknessradio.com. Click on the live chat link. Join us. It's free. It's fun. And you can talk with other like-minded individuals that are interested in the paranormal. They're there to share their ideas and thoughts with you. Hopefully, you'll join us. And that way, you can also ask questions of our guest. If you have other questions for our guests, you can email them to me. You can call in at 800-270-5560. Again, that's 800-270-5560. And again, if you want tickets to come see the horror movie Quarantine with Tim, Nicole, and I this Thursday at Rollsdale AMC Theaters, be there at 630. You can call in right now to get free passes from Tim. Each pass is good for you and a guest to attend the movie Quarantine. Brand new spooky horror movie coming out this Thursday. Be patient, Tim's the only one in there answering phones. Right now, we're going to get back to our guest, Len Marzulli. Before we went to the break, Len, you were talking about... um, how you think that there's something going on right now that may tie back into the old days. Why don't you flesh that out a little bit more for us? Well, thanks. Um, I believe... And again, let me mention real quickly that the name of your book, I want to make sure we we do this justice. The name of the book that uh, Len is talking about with us this evening is Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, The Coming Great Deception, and the Luciferian End Game. We do have a link on our website. If you go to darknessradio.com, click on Upcoming Shows, you'll see a picture of Len there, and there's a link so you can click it and go order the book as well. Again, it's called uh, Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, The Coming Great Deception, and the Luciferian End Game. I appreciate the plug. Thanks so much. No problem. The deal, and and it it took me a while, you know, to get here, and I realized that there's definitely a jump from something that happened thousands of years ago to what's happening today. And I stand on the shoulders of my my theological mentor, if I can use those those terms, Dr. I.D.E. Thomas, who wrote a book called The Omega Conspiracy, which talks and really relates to um, the this this insurgent or excursion, let's say, of fallen angels coming to Earth cohabiting with the woman and the offspring being a Nephilim, um, which was never supposed to happen, by the way, which, which, and as a quick sidebar, they were here 400 to 450 years, and shortly thereafter, we know that some sort of a global flood happened. All, almost all cultures throughout the world have some sort of a flood story. And in that flood story, although it may be different, slightly, you know, there's some slight changes, they still believe that there was a flood that apparently wiped out everybody except for eight people. Do I believe that? Yes, I do, because there's too many, there's just too many um, uh, stories from different cultures spread throughout the planet. I mean, China has a flood story encrypted, right? literally encrypted in, in their Chinese glyphs. It's there. The flood story is there. Well, it's not even China. It's in, in all parts of the world. There's different versions of the story. Well, the same thing. I live in California. The Chumash Indians literally have a flood story. You know, we have a quick question from our chat room, if I can throw this out to you while we're talking about this. Um, User 67 says, this man is totally correct from a historical point of view if you use the Bible as a history book. My question is this. Biblical text also says that the fallen angels who bred our women also taught us to forge metal, use plants to treat disease, taught men about fire, among other things. Are they really the bad guys or the good guys? And where would we be if we didn't understand these concepts? Great question. Thank you so much. Here's the deal. There was a quid pro quo. There was something for something. And before they had access to the female population, they traded what? They traded technology. Does that ring a bell? Mm-hmm. Anybody who studied the UFO phenomena? What apparently, according to you know UFO mythos, because that's what it is, wasn't there, don't know. And, and, and neither were you or anybody else who right. said that, you know, no, it, it's, it's all you know, second-hand information from witnesses that have finally come forward and talked about that at some point in time our government, the United States government, and not the government, you know, maybe that we see, perhaps a, uh, a shadow government, I don't know, but people in that government apparently made some sort of a deal with so-called extraterrestrials. Uh, the movie Taken by Steven Spielberg, right. um, you know, talks about this at great length, the most expensive miniseries ever created for television, 20 hours, and yet it's only aired on the, on the sci-fi channel, not a major network. You know, no, 
uh, not bashing the Sci-Fi Channel here, but I mean, why not NBC or ABC? I mean, come on, 20 hours only on the Sci-Fi Channel, and in that, it's sort of a roots, if I can use that, an Alex Haley roots of ufology, and it talks about that there was some sort of a, you know that one of the one of the episodes. There's definitely a trade that goes on between our government, the government of the United States, and these so-called extraterrestrials. They're allowed access to the population, and for that. Quid pro quo, they get technology. Doesn't that ring a bell? Doesn't that mirror, in essence, what happened in the days of Noah, when there's that trade before they get to the women, according to the Book of Enoch, there's a trade. They show them primitive weapon making. Now, that doesn't mean that that's all they had up their sleeve. For instance, when... Well, when can the, I mention, too, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, please. The, the strange thing, if I remember that correctly, was when God punished them, he locked them away, Right. And and they were Correct. they were they were put away for a period of however thousands of years, and it just so happens that when they were released coincides with the industrial revolution that took place. <laughs> Is that correct? You know, I've I've heard that. I'm I'm I don't know enough about that, and I've never delved into it enough to really weigh in on that. It's an interesting theory. Well, because um, it's I, amazing I, how we went from very little technology to an explosion. Yes. All of a sudden. It's, it's almost bizarre. If you were to chart history or the, or the progress of mankind, let's say, from 5,000 years ago to the Industrial Revolution, basically it's, it's a flat line. Nothing really happens. Yeah, you get some little Twitters, you know, Gutenberg and the printing press. That's huge. You flip on, on, the, you know, on the radar screen. And, and, you know, Bach writing music and the invention of some instruments and mm -hmm. Western music as we know it. I mean, there's, there's some certain, certain blips. The Renaissance certainly is a major blip. But when you get to... When you get to the Industrial Revolution, it's like it just goes off the charts. And then when you, when you get to the Information Age, which is where we are now, it's exponential. It just, it just goes through the roof. And so, you know, knowledge increases. And it's interesting, in my opinion, and this ties into the second leg of the book, Prophecy. The title of the book, Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural. In the second leg of the book, Prophecy, it, it discusses the idea that, this, um, that I believe this is a fulfillment of the prophecy, which is about 2,500 years ago, in the book of Daniel, which talks about men will run to and fro over the face of the earth, and knowledge will increase. Okay, let's look at that. Men will run all over the face of the earth, and knowledge will increase. Well, until aviation, and until the Industrial Revolution, and certainly the Information Age, I mean, again, we talked about this, it's pretty much a flat line for 5,000 years. Right. You know, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, I hate to, you know, put a, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, yeah, there's blips, there's things that happen and everything else, but the Industrial Revolution, it changes. So I believe that this prophecy pen 2,500 years ago is, is for our time, that, uh, you know, man is, men are running to and fro over the face of the earth daily. It, it, it's a common occurrence. Um, you know, people hop on airplanes and go to the other side of the earth, or the space shuttle. I mean, just exactly what we're doing. Exactly. And, and the automobile and, and everything else. I mean, it's all completely changed in the last hundred or so years. We need so, to take a break here, Len. We'll come okay. back and we'll, we'll discuss more of this. It's fascinating, and I, I'm enjoying talking to you as well. Great. And again, our, our guest is Len Marzulli. His book is called Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, The Coming Great Deception and the Luciferian Endgame. Uh, if you're interested in being a part of tonight's show and you have questions for Mr. Marzulli, you can call in at 800-270-5560, 800-270-5560. We're going to take your call, Bonnie, when we come back after uh, a quick break here. And again, uh, if you want to see a movie with Tim and I this week and go see Quarantine, give us a call. We do have some tickets still left at the Rosedale AMC Theater this week. We're going to go see Quarantine at 630. Give us a call. Tell Tim that you want to uh, come on out and he'll take the information. You're listening to the best of Paranormal Talk Radio right here on the home of Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. Tomorrow, you're going to want to join us as well. We're going to be back from 9 to midnight tomorrow. Of course, for the first hour, you can join us with uh, national news correspondent Bree Sanders talking about crazy news from around the United States. We're also going to get a brand new book review from the lovely Susan Cummins. And uh, tomorrow night's topic is near-death experiences, and this is something that I'm definitely interested in. As you know, if you've listened in the past, one of my main driving forces in the paranormal field for me is my overwhelming fear of death. Tomorrow we're going to talk to a specialist that uh, helps people in coming to terms with death and a specialist who deals with people once they've crossed over and come back. So you're going to want to tune into tomorrow night's Darkness Radio. Again, if you miss any of our shows, you can always check out our shows on our podcast page. 
and uh, click on the Darkness Radio link. If you have any questions for our guests tonight, you can give us a call or you can call us at our 800 number, which uh, again is one 800 Two seven zero five five six zero. Our guest this evening is Len Marzuli, talking about his new book, Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural: The Coming Great Deception and the Luciferian End Games. Do you mind if we take a couple more uh, calls from uh, listeners here, Len, before Let's we get do in? It, sure. All right, we've got uh, Andy from Prior Lake is on the line with us. Had some questions about a- aliens. Andy, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Dave. Thank you. I got a question for Mr. Marzuli. Um, the book, I don't know a lot about this book, uh, Behold a Pale White Horse. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it rings in his bells, you guys. Um, the writer of the book, he came out later on in his life and about all the Area 51 stuff. I'm just wondering, uh, if he was, they don't know really what happened to him at the end of his life. They say he was murdered. They say, uh, do you know anything about that? Um, uh, are you asking whether he was murdered, the author of the book? Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting. He was definitely shot by uh, by a police officer, um, and you know, I, again, I wasn't there. Don't know. The widow has gone on the record saying that it was an accident, never should have happened. Who knows? You know, I find it very interesting that this guy was a whistleblower. Uh, his name escapes me for for right now, but I've, I've read the book. I, I know the content. He's he's all over the internet, especially on YouTube. Uh, he was an early whistleblower talking about Area 51. Uh, I've been there in 51. I didn't see anything, but I've talked and I actually interviewed, um, well, that, that might be too much of a, a far out of a sidebar, but I interviewed um, a, a two-star general, retired two-star general, and I was able to, from the body language, ascertain that something that was going on there it may be directly linked to what we would call an extraterrestrial presence, but that's my own conclusion. Do I have proof? No. Um, a friend of mine, Gary Schultz, went to Area 51, uh, and this was before they extended the boundaries to Area 51, and uh, shot. He went on a Wednesday. And remember, when I'm talking Area 51, when, when Schultz was out there, there was no X-Files. There was no Independence Day. No one knew about Area 51, okay? It wasn't like it is today where, you know, a caller calls up and starts talking about Area 51 because you've been enculturated from all the movies and all the books and, other, and the whistleblowers that have come out. Right. When Schultz was there... And this goes way back. None, you know, no, a few, just a very select group of people even knew about it. Anyway, to cut to the chase, Schultz is out there on a Wednesday night. Why? Because Wednesday night is the hot night. That's when they fly the ships. They pick midweek because apparently, according to studies, I'm not making this stuff up because I talked to Schultz and interviewed him, but according to Schultz, that they did a study and they discovered that Wednesday night was the, the least amount of traffic. People stayed at home. It was midweek. People stay home. They don't do anything on a Wednesday night for the most part. So Schultz is out there with his camera and he sees this craft. And he takes a shot of it. I've got the. I've got one of the copies of the picture. I mean, it's wow. just a classic UFO disc. Now, does that mean it's an alien, you know, technology from another world? Couldn't tell you. It wasn't there. But I do know this: Lazar, whom I have met and spoken with, Bob Lazar swears by it that he went out and saw the the so-called sports model and seven hangers in Area 51. Mm-hmm. The two-star general that I interviewed when I and this is how I did it. I, I kind of talked to this guy for about 20 minutes. I had him softened up. It was softball questions about security, you know, laser, laser scans, DNA tests. I had him really relaxed. And then after about 20 minutes, I hit him with the zinger, which was this. What was your reaction the first time you saw the retrieved extraterrestrial bodies in Area 51? Huh. And this guy's, this guy's body language went off the hook. Now, does that mean anything? Possibly, if you believe body language and what people do. In my opinion, I, I hit pay dirt. Does that mean he was at Area 51 and saw these bodies? I can't tell you. But I personally believe that um, the Roswell crash was deliberate. I believe the bodies were retrieved. By the way, in my newsletter, not in September, but um, in August newsletter, we actually interviewed um, Dr. Jesse Marcel, Jr. Mm -hmm. And he comes on the record with us in the newsletter and discusses what he saw. Uh, you know, so many years ago, the record from the uh, Roswell spacecraft. So, I mean, I've answered a bunch of different questions. I hope that... That yeah. kind of hit some of the mark there for you. Andy, thanks for calling in. Would you like to join us at the uh, movie this week and see Quarantine out at the Rosedale AMC Theaters? Yeah, why not? All right, I'll put you on hold. I'll have Tim take your call. And uh, Timmy's on line, too. Andy would like to join us. Uh, Bonnie, we're going to take your call here. Let's take uh, Bonnie. You're calling from Chicago, and you want to know about Fallen Angels. Go ahead. Yes. Um, hi. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Thank you for calling in. Thanks, Bonnie. No problem. 
Um, fallen angels, that's kind of a new concept for me. Um, I've kind of stayed away from anything like that and I've focused on just angels. Um, and so listening to you talk, I'm wondering, you know, are fallen angels still here on Earth? Um, do we encounter them? What are their characteristics if they still are here in present day? They're known as the new kids on the block, and they've got a rockin' new tour coming out this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, Bonnie. Here's the deal, um, and, and I'll answer that in, in a, very, uh, a very interesting uh, part of ancient manuscripts. There's a story in a, in a manuscript that's about 2,500 years old. It's, it's specifically called the Book of Daniel. And in that, in that book, uh, Daniel uh, basically drops to his knees and, and says a prayer, okay, a prayer meaning or request. He's, he's, he needs to hear. He needs to get an answer. So he's really desperate. So he drops to his knees, says a prayer to, let's say, El Shaddai, all right, for lack of a better word. And uh, he says his prayer to El Shaddai, and uh, nothing happens. About 21 days later, this is what the text says now. This is really bizarre stuff. Daniel's just kind of cruising around. All of a sudden, this angel appears to him. Well, apparently, when you're in the presence of these angelic beings, the, the power is overwhelming. So Daniel falls on his face as if dead, literally, according to the text. Remember, this is Daniel writing what, what he experienced. The angel comes over and picks him up and says, Don't fear, Daniel, O, you know, o beloved man of El Shaddai. And he says, from the first time, for the first, or from the first moment that you uttered this prayer, this request, I was dispatched to, to help you, okay? And here's the deal, Bonnie, listen up. But I was restrained by the prince of Persia, i.e., a fallen angel, a demonic, satanic entity. And, he, and in fact, he was detained so much that he had to go back for reinforcements, which he does, and he gets this other angel called Michael, and the two of them, and perhaps hordes more, hundreds, thousands, who knows, the text doesn't say. I wish it would have amplified that battle. But apparently, uh, they win, they're able to get through, and then he appears to Daniel. And then at the end of the, of the visitation, he says, I must go now, because I have to do battle elsewhere. So what we see in the supernatural or the paranormal realm is that this war is going on continually. You know, this war between good angelic forces and evil or malevolent angelic forces, and it's continuing. We also can take the book of Revelation, where it talks very specifically about a battle in the future. Now, this is a real mind screw from us, because we're sitting here going, well, how can someone write about something that hasn't happened yet? I mean, that's just bizarre. And, of course, that's what prophecy is. And that, that begs the question, if there is prophecy, you know, and it's not Nostradamus, which is real fuzzy and, you know, you can interpret it 50 different ways, but the specificity of the book of Revelation talking about, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels cast out Satan. Now, I'm not making this stuff up. Now, that's a prophecy. That hasn't happened yet, in my opinion. It hasn't happened yet. So it talks of a time in the future where this great war in heaven is going to happen. The devil, Satan, is literally cast to earth according to this particular prophecy and, and, and this book. You, if you believe it, fine. If you don't believe it, it, it makes interesting reading. Nonetheless, it, it seems to point to a time which we may be headed towards, and of course that's what I believe. So there are good angels, there are demonic entities, and there are fallen angels. Demons, in my opinion, are the, are the, um, the offspring between fallen angels and the women of earth i.e. the Nephilim, the Nephilim. Okay. And that offspring were, were destroyed in the flood. The Nephilim were all destroyed in the flood. And so those disembodied spirits, in order to manifest in this dimension, and I realize I'm, I'm, I'm laying a lot of stuff on you, Bonnie, in order to no, this materialize... Is, this is good. This is what I wanted to know. Okay. In this dimension, must materialize, must inhabit something. Remember the movie The Exorcist? The demon inhabits who? The little girl, right? Why? Because she allows it to happen, but because she's screwing around with a Ouija board. So she, she opens herself up to the demonic. The demonic enters into her. There's another story where this one man, uh, this is like a 2,000-year-old story, one man is like demon-possessed. And uh, this rabbi, first-century rabbi, comes up to him and says, Who are you? And, and the man answers, the demon-possessed man answers, Legion, we are many. And the rabbi goes, Well, you know, come out. 
and commands them to come out, and instantly the demons leave, and they go into a herd of pigs, a herd of swine. The swine go crazy and they drown themselves. All that to say that demons are different than fallen angels. Demons must inhabit something, a body, something, in order to manifest in our dimension. Fallen angels can just pop in. Len, we have to take a break. Bonnie, thanks a lot for your call and being thanks, a part Bonnie. of the show tonight. I that answered it. Thank yeah, you, Bonnie. Thank you. All right, Len, stay with us, and all of you stay with us. You're listening to Darkness Radio. Welcome back to Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. We have about six minutes left in this part of the show. We'll be back with more Len Marzulli after the top of the hour. Len, uh, let's, we had a caller. If you guys, uh, we lost, unfortunately. If you want to call in and you have questions for Len, you can give us a call. Or if you're calling outside of the state of Minnesota, call us at 800 270 Five five six zero, or you can email me. We'll be taking those uh, emails and messages right now. Let's get it back in with Len. So, Len, w what do you think is the great deception? What's coming up? What, what can we talk about before we go to the next hour? Well, how much time do I have? About ten minutes here. You have about five minutes before we go to the top of the hour, and then we'll come back and have another hour with you. Briefly, I believe that the coming great deception of a Luciferian endgame is what I what I term the alien gospel, and that is this: that the so-called extraterrestrials genetically manipulated us from primitive man thousands of years ago one two they started a myriad of the earth's religions in order to bring her into higher consciousness three because we kind of hit the wall and we're at a crisis point they have now returned to help us transition through this time now i know that that sounds crazy right except when <laughs> it's based on over, over 30 years of research into the prophetic, one, two, what is manifesting in our skies? What supernatural events are manifesting globally around the planet? What are we looking at, and have we been warned? And in my opinion, the answer to all those things are, yes, supernatural things are manifesting. Uh, the UFO phenomenon is burgeoning. When you look at UFOs being sighted by hundreds of people every month, Cattle mutilations being cited all over the world. Crop circles, again, <clears throat> in, in many countries throughout the world. And, of course, alien abductions, people who claim uh, to be abducted by aliens. Inst interestingly, a uh, quick little sidebar, in my monthly newsletter, which if you go to the website, uh, lamarzilli.wordpress.com, which is my daily blog, on the right-hand corner you can get the newsletter. It's a buck fifty a month. This, this month we have Dr. Uh, Dr. Lear who has taken out uh, alien implants, so-called alien implants, from different people. He's done about 12 of these operations so far. He's had the metals tested, and it's, it's just a phenomenal interview. I mean, I was just riveted, and, and I asked the questions, and I was riveted. So, I mean, it's just a great interview with Dr. Lear. But getting back to all this, what we're looking at, in my opinion, is um, kind of like the, the first salvos of the coming great deception. Um, there's a channeler called... Uh, Blossom Goodchild. It's all over the internet about October 14th. There's this huge mothership that's going to manifest in our skies and and be there over and, Alabama, right? Over well over Alabama, supposedly. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> uh, and and the deal is this: the information that she's getting is channeled information. I blog about this, and I talk about that the ancient manuscripts tell tell us that a person who channels. All that is is they have a familiar spirit. John Edwards, let's say, who calls himself a psychic, or the psychic that you mentioned is going to be at some, some fair. If they're really genuine and they're, and they're under the power or under the, um, let's say, league, uh, in league with a familiar spirit, all that is is demonic activity, in my opinion. Yeah, they've got power. Yeah, they, they have a spiritual source. But where is it coming from? And what litmus test did they use? And here's the rub. And this is what your listeners really need to think about. When you come up against some sort of a paranormal or supernatural force, what are you going to use to determine what you're coming up against is either benevolent, good, or malevolent, evil? How are you going to know? Well, let me ask you then, because that's a question we've asked to some of the, of the uh, spiritualists and the, the mediums and psychics we've had on the show. That, you know, the Catholic Church, well, not even Catholic Church, but religion preaches that you should not seek the advice or counsel of mediums, and speaking to the dead is something left only for the saints and Jesus. Right. Why... Uh, why do you believe it's it's of the devil? I mean, if, if some of these people are born children, we know children are born with the ability to see spirits. 
I saw spirits as a child. Okay. Does that make me inherently evil? And I know no, the people in the chat room say, yes, of course it does, because I'm me. But uh, how, do we <laughs> differ- <laughs> how do we differentiate? And, Annie, I want you to know, we do have you call on hold. Uh, we're going to get to you after the top of the hour, if you can stay with us, please. Um, Hang in there, Annie. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back with you after we do the, the top of the hour news break, because we're going to commercial here, or going to uh, top. No, we still have. All right. Uh, we can take her, Tim? Okay. Um, let, let, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll take her real quickly here. Len, we've got okay. Annie from St. Paul on the line Hi, with us. Annie. Hi, how are you? I'm Good. great. Yourself? I'm I'm in shock listening to you. It's, it's wonderful and so refreshing to hear what you're saying. I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, through my scriptural reading over the years, and it took a long time before things started settling in as to these UFOs. Um, they are evil. Um, they are the fallen angels. Um, and I don't even know where to begin, so I'm going to just start. I read the book of by Anna Catherine Emmerich, her four-volume set, and she talks about the fallen angels. They were experts in flight. They were extremely intelligent. If you refer to her readings in Genesis, about Genesis, in the beginning, and you go to the Bible, in the Jerusalem Bible, it talks about these fallen angels, and they had a great and very powerful city. They were very brilliant. And I link that to Atlantis. I think that they, are, they were the Atlanteans, and which was destroyed in the flood to wipe out the Nephilim. Um, and that's all in the book of Anna Catherine Emmerich. I've read the volume three times, and mm. each time I read it, it was a whole new story. And it really started, I really picked up, I think, the third time I read it. These UFOs are out there, and mm-hmm. they are the evil ones. They are the devils. And it, she talks in later days that more and more people will witness them. Well, that, and, and that is what's, what's coming around. Annie, we've, we're going to be going to break here in about 30 seconds. Um, have if you ever related these, these, angels or, uh, these angels to Atlantis? Have you made that connection at all in anything you've read, that that was the city of Atlantis, of the angels, the fallen angels? Well, I mean, the, the whole, <clears throat> we only have one really his, history, uh, historic reference to Atlantis at all, and that's from Plato. As far as I'm, you know, if, at least at least what I've read, so it, it's certainly a possibility. I think a lot of the uh, the stuff of, of miracles and um, and, I, and I, I mentioned this, the, the Greek mythology specifically talking about the Titans. I think you can trace back to the Nephilim uh, and and the incursion of the fallen angels with the women of Earth and creating giants. So yes, I think there could be uh, some of that storytelling. Certainly could have been. Uh, used for the fabled city of Atlantis, which, again, we only have one written uh, account in all of history, and that's found in Plato, and he just kind of mentions it. And so from that is this whole mythos about this, right. you know, Atlantis has, uh, has grown up. Well, Annie, thanks for your call this evening, and thanks for listening. Would you like to join us out at the movie Quarantine this Thursday? Sure. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold. Tim will take care of you, and he'll get you the uh, information. Again, it's at Rosedale AMC Theater this Thursday, 6.30. Be there. Hold on, Annie. Thank you very much, Len. This is fascinating stuff. We're going to be back and talk more about your book. And again, if you're interested, the name of the book is Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, The Coming Great Deception in the Luciferian Endgame. You're listening to Darkness Radio.